well, if you look at those second two sentences of the introduction, you'll see that what they both suggest is a fear of error. That the problem of knowledge arises because you have a fear or an anxiety that you may be erroneous, and it's that fear itself that generates the moment of reflective stepping back that we think of as epistemology. And the moment of stepping, stepping back that we think of as epistemology then is the cause of subject-object dualism. And once you've got subject-object dualism, that is once you've reflectively placed the object outside your ken, you ain't going to get it back. So, does this structure look familiar to anyone? <coughs> Say anyone who's read Remembrance of Things Past, for example? It's a structure of jealousy. Right? It's, it's, how do I know she's being faithful? I don't trust her. That's it, it's over. <laughs> From that moment on, nothing she can do will be trustworthy because you already decided that she, it, you don't know if she is trustworthy, right? She may be, right? So you can lock her in a room and you can imprison her, and even her fantasies are going to be disloyal. Nothing will work. Epistemology is a form of maddened jealousy of a certain kind, or the anxiety of the jealous lover. That's the thought here. The fear of error is the error. You have to see that that's a deep thought and not a shallow thought. Because you have to see how that fear or anxiety can then generate a series of responses. And that once those responses get going, they deepen the separation until there's no way back. Right? And that's part of the story that Hegel means to be telling here. And he thinks that as will come out in a second, that part of the reason why modern philosophers could do this and not notice the kind of trap they were in is because they had the view, wholly unjustified, that the mind was better known than the world, that you could have non-inferential self-knowledge of your own mental states, and that therefore, part of the new individualism, that you could be in possession of a kind of certainty about yourself, even if you knew nothing about the world. Now, if you think hard, just for, say, ooh, 17 or 18 seconds, Imagine someone who is absolutely certain about their own inner states, but uncertain about the world. You think about what you're imagining. <laughs> this is what we usually think of as a psychotic state. <laughs> but well, I mean that seriously. And I want you to think about what it means to think that's, that, that we have a whole structure of philosophy that's premised on that idea that the inner is safe and knowable, but everything outside is mad, right? And, and of course, you know, the one person who knew that something was wrong with the structure was Hume in that famous passage where he says, I am a monster to myself, I think myself mad, and then has to go play billiards. But that, that's haunting. But it's a haunting and terrible moment because he cannot find why there should be this connection but what, between what he takes to be austere and rational skepticism and his monstrosity, this sense of madness. 
and he cannot diagnose why he has to literally put his his best certainty about himself out of mind in order to enter the world. You have to leave behind your self-certainty in order to play billiards.